Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Hopefully with less death this time. shoot it but it only slows it down as you can see it is a temporary reprieve however to say something crazy i apologize you mentioned that you're having uh relatively free time lately to watch and it's not like these are bad games but you're pretty much just watching me playing the lower quality Zelda games link's awakening and minish cap were the two exceptions but otherwise we're we're down in like i, I, I don't want to call them bad games but these are definitely lower quality than the, the Zelda level of quality, right? Oh, by the way, I just want to point something out really quick. I know it's hard to see for those of you there, but if I pull this up, you'll notice that it actually shows the, the spawn points and the routes, right? Significance? They're random! So sometimes you can pretty much... Yeah, I know. Uh, you can pretty much straight up guarantee that there are certain situations which are just, you're gonna die. Especially in some of the later, far more complex areas, where there are far worse than your basic level uh, trains that are coming out to kill you. Through no fault of your own, just pure RNG. Yeah, these are the direct-to-DVD direct DVD Zelda games. They're not bad, right? Except for Zelda 1 and 2. But you can see why comparing these two, the biggies, is just, huh? Either way, first we want an ability, and second we want a heart. So I'm going to grab Act and rip his heart out! Okay, thank you for the heart, Act. Um, oh, it's... It's got, like, ugh, gross all over it. What have you been eating, Act? It's okay, I don't blame you. Yes, the princess. Teacher, I'm right here. Oh, he can't hear me. Lure! Well, teacher, he doesn't have to worry about me. What was that, young man? You mean the princess spirit is right here now? Yeah. Talk as if she's passed away. How incredibly insensitive of you. I'm sure she's just out wandering somewhere. But if I sent the soldiers out looking for her, the kingdom would panic. I suppose I'll just have to go find her myself. And he's off to die. Well. He did. Visually, the DS games aren't super pretty. We do have the power to fix that by making it look much, much worse. But just for a bit of perspective, this is what the game could look like. It's a, it's a little different. But if you're wondering why we don't do this, do you see what's happening with the shadow under that guy right there? That. Trust me when I say that any shaded area, which is pretty much every indoor area, is going to have that issue right there. So... Ah, whoops. So that's why we don't do that. If you're wondering. Uh, okay, left, I think? I can't remember where everything is. Yeah, pretty much, Colgrim. It is quite literally headache-inducing in both directions. I will admit, and I do want to slightly apologize for this, I'm kind of going out of my way to not do some of the side stuff, especially in these two games, because 
I want to be done with them as soon as possible. And I'm just going to be extremely honest about that. There's some good gameplay here and there's some good stuff that needs to be mentioned, but man, I, I don't want to be playing the, these DS games any longer than I have to. So we're going to do a couple of side things. But we're not going to be getting all the hearts and doing all the mini games. We talked about that during Phantom. Now, I should probably explain, because some people think that means we're going to be skipping content, which is, of course, not accurate. Damn it. Again, the kind of stuff we're skipping is doing the digging minigame, or delivering goods from one destination to the other, or roaming around getting all of the stamps, or roaming around getting all of the rabbits. We're not getting all the gold skull tools, to put it very simply. It's not terrible. It's just it'd be nice to 100% and you know to get all of the hearts, heart pieces and whatnot, or just heart containers, I should say. God damn it, game! Attack! For example, that I don't mind grabbing. It's quite literally in our way, and it was quick and easy. So we're being a little strategic about it, so we're not skipping everything. Again, just like the Gold Skull... I think Gold Skull Tulas is the best way to put it. We're not getting all the Gold Skull Tulas, but that doesn't mean we're skipping all of them, either. Any percent for this game? Four hours and... 15 minutes. Yes, it's still a review, I see. I have 100% of this game, but I've only done it with once, and that was with a walkthrough. If this game gets a port, if if they announce Spirit Tracks coming out on the Switch with proper controls, I'm going to be like... And then I'm going to buy it the day it comes out. 3 hours, 59 minutes, wow. Oh, Wii U version, that's why. That makes sense. Um, what's the other thing I wanted to do? Right. It's time to kill chaos. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, that sounds a little bit more like what I was expecting, Ross. Alright, so let's see if we can go kill chaos, shall we? They were added, Talia. You see, Brigwin did that thing with her hips, and I, I can't say no to that. So that's two rabbits. Like I said, getting five rabbits is something I actively want to do. 100% for the DS version? Oh, Jesus. Um, six and a half hours, I'm going to say. So, we're dead. Um, nine and a half hours. Wow. I didn't think I'd be lowballing that. That makes sense, though. And that's why we're not 100%ing this. Oh, thank God. Okay. We didn't die. That looked me shocked. Beetle. Could you come here, please? 
is uh Maladus is actually kind of high tier for what he is. He's a local threat, but he's a big local threat, if that makes any sense. Well, all right, Gum Gum. I will fight enemies in time, which, if you think about it, just means you're fighting enemies, right? Like, that's just... Like, we're all in the fourth dimension like, right now. Yeah, he's a, that's a good way to put it, Trahexia. He's still smaller scale than some of the stuff we've encountered in the series, but Maladus might be one of the bigger scale threats we've encountered that isn't named Ganon. thing with Maladus, he's a pretty typical I'm an evil destructive force and he's got nothing else going for him. I don't want to give too much away, but there's a reason Cole is the actual villain of this particular game, even though Maladus is the final boss. Because Maladus' personality can be boiled down to, Bleh, destroy, destroy. Beetle. Beetle! Come to me, Beetle. God dang it. Come on. So, bomb bag, first of all, what do we got? We got 400 rupees to play with. I really hope so, Ross. Hey, dragon player. 500! I hate you. I hate you so much, Beetle. Thank you. God damn it. All that. I've, I, the whole thing, I was trying to get it. It's 500. I need... Frickin' 58 more rupees. Oh, I hope they're good, Baron. What you got for toppings? <sighs> Whatever. We don't need the bomb bag. It just, it would be nice. I don't actually remember where the nearest vendor is to buy items back. I'm sure there is one, but I'm not sure we have access to them yet. Most people haven't, Ross. As I've said a few times, I have a bit of a speech plan for the beginning of Four Swords Adventures. Here's a really quick version of it. You've never heard of how good of a game Four Swords Adventures is because Nintendo failed. This is my third time playing, Colgrim. And uh, I actually tried to do a replay just for fun, ran into the Whistle mini game, and quit at a point at which we've already passed. So, third full playthrough. Well, it probably doesn't help. Like, again, I don't want to go too much into it right now, but... There's Four Swords, and then there's Four Swords Adventures. What's the difference between these two games? One of them was designed to be a multiplayer-only mode, which was an add-on tacked onto the GBA port of Link to the Past, which then later on the DSi, through DSiWare, got a single-player mode. The other one is a completely single-player experience, which has an optional multiplayer mode, which was made by the core Nintendo EAD team, has the next Zelda. Yes, I did, Traxia. Yeah. Death to all, as they say. Mm, that does sound good, Baron. Except for the sausage part. I, I wouldn't go for that. But yeah, like, Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures have so little to do with each other and only one word separates them, and both were being advertised for the GBA specifically.
Who knew there's a tiny station all the way out here? Why don't we see who lives in that house over there? Okay. Oh, That bridge. It's a complete mess. How are we supposed to get to the other side with the bridge in the state? Maybe someone around here can fix it for us. I mean, I've flung plenty of mud at Nintendo, and will continue to do so. But the argument canon has been leveled that the price for Nintendo being the level of quality they are is the level of stupid that they also are. If I'm being honest, I think that's a bit of a false dichotomy. However, in reality land, that might really be it. Like, we really might just be locked in with them being morons in exchange for them also putting out really high quality products. Because, yeah, I'll take Nintendo over Sony to use a direct comparison. Or Microsoft. Or Tencent. Like, we can go way down from Nintendo, you know what I mean? Well, well, well. What do I have here? What do you want, you rupleyless ragamuffin? This is no place for the likes of you. Sure, sure, ready. Get out of here. Uh, what's that? Who am I? Listen well and remember the name, Squirt. I am Linebeck the Third, president of Linebeck Trading. I hunt down the rarest antiques from around the world, and then I sell them to the highest bidder. How's that for an introduction? Did I just blow you away? Oh yeah. Well, you do make a good point there. I am pretty spectacular. You know, I hadn't noticed before, but you possess a certain charm, Squirt. Yeah, so, I hate to continue to harp on this. This is after, this is four generations after uh, Phantom Hourglass on Falkenstein. I hate to keep harping on this, but Linebeck's family line should probably be sufficiently familiar with Link's Family Nine, and Zelda's, for that matter, but especially Link's. But no, total strangers. Moving on. You're trying to get to the ocean realm, but the bridge is out. Well, that's a sticky situation, isn't it? I agree the bridge is a sound mess. The huge storms we had really did a number on it. I was going to call a bridge worker I know in the Snow Realm to fix the mess, but the spirit track's vanishing. I've got bigger fish to fry. See, I deal with merchants all over the world and I can't get anywhere now. Wait, you're an engineer, aren't you? Oh, that's just perfect! Go fetch that bridge worker so we can both get on with our business. Sound good? Yeah. Woohoo! Oh, I know the light of you, Squirt. I'll wait here, so go fetch the bridge worker. And yeah, by the way, fun little side thing. Um... The, uh, <sighs> actually lost it, holy crap. Right, uh, they actually showed that Linebeck was allowed to leave the Ocean King's dimension in Phantom uh, Hourglass, but not the Eskimo people. So I don't know why they're here. See, I don't know, I, I guess, Blade of All, if I knew, random example, that my grandparents were very well connected to a certain influential and affluential organization, which they were, uh, then I'd probably know about that, which I do. I guess, God, what's the fastest way up there? Because it's not just the fact that Link was Linebeck's friend, he was Link, you know? The fact that Link just kind of faded into history is kind of weird, honestly. Like, he saved two separate worlds in his lifetime. Or two separate realms, I guess. You know, I'm not saying he should be like, oh, you're totally a link or anything like that. I'm just saying that the writers suck at what they're doing. And really, that is all I'm saying here. This is part of that external continuity egg we've already talked about. 
I really think they didn't even think about it. We're just like, yeah, here we go. Yeah, there's a near total certainty chance that the Link from Wind Waker was one of the kings who married Tetra to found the royal line. And yet, huh? And yeah, I know, I know, I know. The common argument is, oh, these are tales. None of these really happened. To which I say, bull crap. That's it. No actual argument. I, I have neither the time nor inclination to actually give more argument there. Bull crap. Moving on. I haven't decided yet. I mean, obviously the music's better and there's a little bit more to do, but it takes a little bit too long. And, uh... I don't know, there's a couple issues. It, it, there's issues. You, ta you know what? Good way to phrase that, Frieza. Tales don't get direct sequels. Plural, by the way. And as I pointed out uh, yesterday, I believe, every issue I have lore-wise with this game could actually be smoothed over relatively easily. But once again, they didn't do that. They don't get credit for something that we can do on their behalf. That's not how that works. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. People did listen to Kid Link back in Ocarina, but that's getting into some other territory. Should be a rabbit like right around here. I remember that. There you are. Boop. Damn it, I thought he would move. He keeps not moving. No! Bunny! God damn it! Hit the brakes! Uh, wouldn't surprise me, Yura. I mean, honestly, I can actually think of worse examples of just spitting on the previous work than this. And and really, the Ur example of that for me is always going to be Chrono Cross. No offense to anybody who likes Chrono Cross, but Chrono Cross so aggressively hates Chrono Trigger that it actually ruined Chrono Trigger for me for several years before I was able to just mentally divorce the two. Ah, frickin' bunny. Oh, don't even get me started about Diablo 4. A game so bad, I vetoed it. Remem remind me how high on the list Diablo 3 is right now. As of this streaming. It is top 10. I think it's top 5. I believe it's top 3. Exactly where it is. Okay, hold on. Uh, so where am I going? Where am I going? Uh, oh god, he's way over there for some reason. All right, well, let's go there then. Number two. There you go. It's in the number two slot. Actually, you know what? Here's another example. This isn't even a spoiler, really. How many of you are familiar with My Little Pony? Yeah, G5. The premise. What world could this be? Some text is appearing. It's faded. Let's see. Pass through the gate. Either way, steam whistle will open. Yeah, so the premise of G5, it's... 
It's hard to even properly explain in summary of how bad this is, so I'm, just, I'm gonna do my best here. Imagine for a moment that you've got this cool, interesting, fun story setting and everything. It's called Final Fantasy IV. Now imagine that this other game comes out immediately after it, called After Years. I don't even have to, to work with this. It just works, doesn't it? Um, and it, it's just... it. Okay. So all of those heroes and legendary people who, who helped and, and worked and grew and knew and they made the world a better place and they made massive status quo changes to the entire world and... Uh, G5 had a couple of good ideas in the interest of total honesty. But then again, so did After Years. And that's the problem, really. There's a few good ideas absolutely buried by a lot of dreck. So again, I said, I said I'd tell you the, the, the premise. So G5 is supposed to be a direct sequel to G4. Yes, you heard me correctly. Direct sequel. So back in G4, the, the one that I usually refer to as MLP, but friendship is magic, to be very clear. Um, they were like, okay, there's this horrible evil death doom that's shown up. And she's so powerful. She's so powerful. Her dick is so big. You can't you can't even see it. It's 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 visible from orbit. And she is so good at everything. And she by herself overwhelms everyone and defeats everyone. And she's so dangerous and so powerful that they had to lock away magic. Yes, magic. All magic in order to deal with this problem. It was just that bad. It was so horrible. Huge dick, huge dick. And um and she was such a large scale threat and blah blah blah. And then, like, a thousand goddamn years, or whatever it is, passed. Way too long. Of everyone living completely opposite of each other. And so they all become racist because they've all... Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just... just I'm, I need to start with that for a second. I need to say that again. My Little Pony. Everyone became racist. Even if you're not familiar with the franchise... That sentence alone should probably pr prompt a... Huh? Anyways. Yeah, we're at the repair the bridge section. Um, it's... Huh? So it's, it's, we've already we've already screwed up the premise twice, by the way. Um, get out of the way. Oh, hey, we have over 500, 500 rupees now. Um, and they all hate each other and they have to rediscover friendship and blah, blah, blah. They have to bring the magic back, but that brings back the villain! And she's so powerful. She's so powerful. And she's such a joke. And that's the worst part of all. First of all, they've already screwed up the premise twice before we even get to the villain. But they also made the villain a central part of the show. She's even in the intro crawl. She's in the title, but you see her every episode. And she's a joke. She's... She's Team Rocket from the show, right? This incompetent boob was the thing so terrifyingly dangerous that the entire squad from the previous generation couldn't deal with her and had to seal away all magic for, for centuries. Strike three, you're out. So what's the thing with the dick size? So it's... I didn't actually come up with that, admittedly. Uh, remember we were talking about... Oh, maybe you don't remember. So, hang on. Rewind. Uh, something I was doing uh, last year and have started doing this year as well, uh, in, in my extremely copious spare time, is the Trek lore run. Oh, we have our first passenger. Yay. Oh, God. He's a very demanding passenger. This is going to be great. Um, this, this might suck a lot. So... Um, the idea is anytime fiction tries to portray someone as so much better or so much more strong or capable or competent and does it in a really incompetent way, the mockery of that failure to talk up the character is their dick is so big, you don't even understand. Because in reality land, if a dude is walking around 
bragging about the size of their dick, then their dick is small. That's a near universal rule. So the whole point behind why that just kind of slowly entered into my lexicon is to mock anybody who is clearly puffing, you know, just, just blowing smoke and puffing up their own uh, features, whether it's combat prowess or tactical ability or leadership capacity or how, uh, or how physically attractive they are or whatever, right? So again, this, this, this super, she's got, her dick is just so big because she's an incompetent nobody. But the show constantly wants us to believe that she is like this eldritch abomination who like broke all the rules of what an alicorn is. She's an alicorn, by the way. She broke all the rules of what an alicorn is and has been around since before uh, since before the MLP Gen 4. Like she was around in the days of when uh, Luna and Celestia were first becoming alicorns. And yeah, Cozy Glow was quite literally and unironically a bigger threat than this nonsense. Okay, so full speed ahead. Look at Beetle later. So, what? I missed the whistle sign. Oh, shoot, right. Sorry, sorry. So yeah, passengers have a happiness meter that goes down as you screw up. And that's not just from taking damage like I just did, but like they have requirements. And if you don't fulfill those requirements, they get unhappy. And if you fail at keeping them happy, you fail the mission. This was done to give you more to do during these sections. I'm not sure how well that succeeds. And yeah, you gotta fall through the freaking side. Okay, so now we gotta get all the way down here. And yeah, you gotta understand what the signs mean, which I'll be honest, I've barely been paying attention to. I've been shooting the signs for the hell of it. Uh, no, Cozy Glow is a sociopath, 100%. Okay, so that sign says... Speed up. You got it, I think. Apparently that was a slow sign. Is this a fast sign? Listen, ISC, I see. What else am I do with these guns? That's gonna be close. That's not going to be... We're dead. We're dead. It's over. Oh, 100% Dragon Player. That's the other thing. We already have someone who is stronger than Twilight in a straight-up fight. Alright, so yeah, there's literally no avoiding this. So we're just going to accept our fate here and die. But yeah, no, Starlight, Starlight would have absolutely crushed. I don't even remember her name. I don't remember her name. Twitface. Okay, so we still have him, and he's still unhappy, but that's actually not too bad. So let's do this again. Now, there is actually one thing they did with Opaline I kind of like in a really awful way, and for an awful reason. She's an abusive mother. Very, uh, gothel. From Tangled. Now, why do I like that? Because kids need to be able to recognize those signs. And recognize that those are villainous acts. Oh, 
really. That was weird. Do you see how they changed their direction at, like, at the last second there? And I was able to go back to my original course. Yeah, Lusamine. That's another interesting one. I like how they're like, oh, she was totally possessed by the Pokemon. It's like, no, no. Did not be going slow right now. In fact, hang on, let's, let's just go. Let's just go. Okay, what's this sign say? Uh... Oh, so you're fine with it, with me running over their corpse, dude? Jesus. Hey, Shimmy Gamix. Hope it was fun. Here, you sure know how to ride those rails, kid. Ride like that puts me in a working mood. I'm heading straight to the job site. As I've said a few times, the demon trains would be a very easy fix. And Discord, Ross. Now, there's a horrifying story for you. I'm not going to say that out loud, because I don't think people need to know that. So you managed to fetch the bridge worker. Nice going there, Squirt. You go ahead and show me the bridge is busted. I'll hit off later. Okay. Damn it, Ginger Ninja. I always knew. I always knew. Thank you very, very much for the sub. The Homeworld block does not include Homeworld 3. As of this moment in time, I have no plans to add Homeworld 3 to that block. As much as it would be wonderful to review an absolutely atrociously terrible game, we've got other things to deal with right now. Let's... Like, we've already got... Wait. Right, hang on, hang on. That's right. I changed my mind on that after, uh, well, essentially after watching Mandalore's thing, but also looking into it uh, on my own. Uh. Let's put that towards the BRPG block, RTS block, and the home world block. How long is home world 3? That's really the question. Yep, this bridge got a number done on it. It's not beyond fixing, though. It'll take a while, so go kill some time. Come back later. Ah, oh, the bridge work. How have you been, my good man? Linebeck, well, I'll be. How you been, you old treasure hound? Much better now that you're here. Do me a favor, work that little magic on this dilapidated bridge. Of course, of course, just leave it to me, it shouldn't be a problem. Assuming, of course, you got my repair fee on hand. You do, don't you? You also still owe me for the work I did on your house, so along with the bridge, have you have 5,000 rupees? 5,000? Surely you must be joking! Lucky for both of us, this young fellow's kindly agreed to foot the bill. He's the one who wanted the bridge fixed in the first place, after all. All I did was send him your way, my friend. 
Oh, is that so, little guy? What? Oh, I'm glad we cleared up that little bit of unsavory business. You best get that money ready, Squirt. No one likes a bail dodger. Ta-da, bye! I'm evil. I don't like who pays me. As long as I get my 5,000 rupees. I'll go fix the bridge, but that money better be ready for me when I'm done. So now we need 5,000 rupees. What kind of nonsense is this? 5,000 rupees? It's positively criminal. Yeah, it's almost like that's the kind of thing you'd charge a state for a large-scale infrastructure project rather than a person. Descendant. He is the third grandchild or great-grandchild. Not sure which. Do you want me to answer that? Because I know the answer to that question, Ross. You do not want me to answer that. What is it, Squirt? You look a bit worried. Because a little kid like you doesn't have 5,000 rupees to drop. Hell, relax. I've got a great idea I'm willing to share with you. We can scrape that mullah together if you're willing to do a little work for me. I do what I say, well, if I have to, I'm not doing porn. Excellent. Now listen closely. That's all I want to say this once. I've heard whispers about some high-value loot that was hidden long ago. What loot? A gem of treasure known as the Regal Ring. From what I can gather, the thing's worth a cool 8,000 rupees. My grandfather left a letter detailing the ring's location shortly before his passing. I've read the clues he gave and looked it all over, but I haven't even hit pay dirt. That's where you came in. Find the ring, bring it back. We'll generate more than enough rupees to pay off your debt. Ah, sure, whatever. Here's the letter. Figure out the riddle, get the ring, make us rich. It's near Cramp's grave. You can find it over there. So picture Discord in your mind, Ross. Okay? Just just put him into your brain. Think about him. Think about John Delancey. Think about his character. Think about shenanigans. Think about season 9 or 8 or whatever the last season was. Okay, you, you got him? You got him there? Okay. So he is suicidally depressed. Because Fluttershy passed away of old age. And so he spent the last centuries just hiding in a cave, letting moss and, and rot and, and water just slowly drip over him like he's in a Dark Souls game. My dear boy, even though I'm no longer with you, I'm sure you're faring well, but just in case you summoned some hard times, I've buried the regal ring in a safe spot. It would be fun if I told exactly where I would it. Use those clues to find it. Enter the hiding spot, sound the light, follow the beam. Four steps north, six steps west. Four, six, four, six. So, to answer your question, Ross, no, they didn't, canonically. Or, we could take all of that and eject it completely out the window. Oh, yeah, and Spike is in G5, by the way. Because, of course, he is. Listen, listen. Continuity is not for G5. Really, it isn't. Even on an individual episode-to-episode -episode basis, they screw up their own continuity constantly. Actually, there we go. At least the good ones, Yura.
What's a descendant? That that sounds like something. Like, can you eat a descendant? Oh, it doesn't sound very flavorful. And yes, I know that Pinkie Pie canonically married a uh, cheese sandwich. Let's ignore that for a second. Would I use ketchup if I made a burger? Why would I ruin a perfectly good burger with ketchup? And thus did the condiment wars begin again. Listen, right now we're searching down a dead guy's... Or, yeah, no, a dead guy's ancient treasure so we could pay for something that we really shouldn't have to pay for. That's, that's all, it's nothing... Fancy. Oh, apparently it's here. Okay. I don't like ketchup. I don't like ketchup with anything. I don't like ketchup by itself. I also don't like mayo. Tomatoes I like if they have salt, which I understand the irony of that sentence. I don't know. Ketchup just doesn't have any really good flavor for me. Now, I do like good mustard, but I have to stress that word good. Because if you get, like, yellow mustard, Heinz mustard, that's crap. Actually, I love pickles, but I'm really picky about pickles. For example, you'll get like those mass pickle jars, which are like kind of a little bit too sour and a little bit too uh, squishy and yuck and ugh, ugh, ugh. Just thinking about it makes me go ugh. I like nice, crispy pickles, either homemade or Clausen's. Or there's these some they have that are really, really sharp and spicy. Oh, those are so good. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of sweet pickles either. But good pickles? I could just eat good pickles as a snack. In fact, I had to stop buying jars of pickles because I would go through them too quickly. Yeah, those aren't cheap. Of course, nothing's cheap nowadays. So, four, six. I don't have I don't have a shovel And all I'm saying is ketchup is literally the devil. That's all I'm saying. I'm 
My nieces love ketchup. They prefer it for pretty much everything. Then again, my niece is also like a ranch. And if there's one truly hellish, nightmarish thing, it is ranch. Ranch is even worse than mayo, if you can believe it. Oh, you son of a submariner! I like blue cheese too. Into the water. I hate you, game. I want you to know that. I hate you so much. Your control system is so terrible, I'm about to die to easy enemies because I can't move and attack what I'm trying to move and then attack. Actually, I do like double bacon cheeseburgers. But can we have some real cheese on that? Like some good Swiss or mozzarella? I'd also accept gorgonzola. I would accept Moonster as well. Swiss is always going to be my, my big pick. I love me some good Swiss. Get some baby Swiss or something on there. Oof. There are types of cheddar I can like. But, like, what you're thinking of when you think of cheddar is generally not a cheese I enjoy. And I can't stand American cheese, ironically. God dang it. You know one thing I like that Ocarina 3DS did? Putting the songs right there as you're playing the music. Orange, yellow, orange, blue. Metric system is fine. I have no issues with that. Six four and not four six. Apparently, we should already be at the point where we have ten stamps, too. Yes, I am literally Hitler, Gum Gum. A fascist who committed suicide. The, the beard gives it away. Ah, uh, so. I got the wriggle ring. I know you could count on you to bring home the bacon. Well, what is it? Let me look at the thing. 
Oh, it's just breathtaking. Grimp always had an eye for treasure like this. The weight, the amazing craftsmanship. All oh, this beauty is worth a ton. Must be one heck of a ring, then. You bet that it's gonna be worth a cool 8,000. When did you get here? How long have you been standing here? Just came by to let you know the bridge is all patched up. Oh, yes, that's right. Wonderful. Sure is, and now the works done, I'll take that ring as payment. This little dude that's worth 8,000 rupees could have fooled me. Still, it beats taking another IOU. Anything else? Give me a holler, bye. I can't believe he just took off with that ring. It's worth almost double what I owed. Uh, God. I guess that's that. Still, you got the real talent for sniffing out treasure. Tell you what, from here on out, bring any treasure you find to me. They impress me. I'll trade you some lovely new car trains. I get out there, find some treasure. Okay. So that's what we got here. We do need those bombs. I doubt it, but let's see if we can get to the full amount here. Because getting about uh, 2,500 would be ideal. Let's see, a food item that I don't understand why it's popular. I mean, I have an entire phrase for it. Pineapple on hamburgers is awesome, especially with some good teriyaki. Ooh, S melted Swiss, teriyaki, pineapple, big old thick chunk of meat, and some nice crispy onions. Gotta have tomatoes with that. A little bit of lettuce, shredded lettuce specifically, that's there for texture. And let's go with a pretzel bun, I think, for that. That'll work out well. Really, Braglin? Sure. Yeah, by the way, he sells shields right next to a like like cave. So. Anyways. You've never had a good pretzel bun, Frieza? My goodness. Well, we uh, we had a good bakery nearby. Uh, the, the nearby, we, I don't have a bakery nearby anymore, put simply. Let's see, weird food take. Um... I do actually have a really weird food take. It's one of the most commonly enjoyed ingestibles in the world. That is That goes back literally millennia. Has huge cultural significance and so much variety and flavor to it that there's generally at least one per type that everyone in chat right now enjoys. That is alcohol. I cannot stand alcohol. I never have. And, as always, I feel the need to defend myself, because yes, I have drunk alcohol before. Plenty of it. I have tried virtually every type of alcohol you can think of. And the most common defense I tend to hear of it is, oh, you just need to put the right flavorings in it. Which always weirds me out, because at that point, my thought process is always, why don't I just have that without the alcohol? No judgment, as always. Oh yeah, this is for you, ISE. And in case you're wondering, because I do get this question semi-frequently too, there's actually two things I don't like about alcohol. First is the taste. 
I don't care what you bury it in, I can always taste the alcohol under that. It's pretty obvious. Second, and more importantly, is the chemistry. I simply understand entirely too much about brain chemistry to really enjoy alcohol. I'm actually amused that some of you are with me on this, because really, trust me when I say, alcohol might be the single most ingested thing in the world. Like, it is a near-universal thing. I suppose you could say it's a very generic category, right? It's like saying fruit. Yeah, no, it, it, name a culture that does not involve alcohol. I will call you a liar. Ah, uh -uh, Jiggly Saint. Mormons say they don't drink at all. Bit different. Give me my bombs! Oh, goody, we can join Beatles Club. Yet, yeah, no. <sighs> Admittedly, my entire biological family drinks, which probably has at least something to do with my opinions on the matter. Like, that probably helped me out early on, you know? When I was a kid. Have you ever had to lift uh, a drunk person before? Because I have. It's kind of a different experience. Like, you think it's just like lifting a person, right? No, no, it's just... They go dead weight. And human beings are really awkward and frustrating to lift when they're not doing anything to help sustain their own weight. Yeah, they're awkward to pick up, they're awkward to maintain, and it hurts. Now, I'm a big guy now. I could probably get away with that a little bit easier nowadays, but... to you, Flag Ant. Happy, happy National Day of Sweden. There was such a thing. We might not make this, going backwards like this. No, we're fine, we're fine. I do not, Yura. Although... <laughs> well, okay, actually, I do know why there's a lot of legislation around cigarettes in the United States. It's an interesting little cycle, which I don't have all the figures in front of me to recite for you. But what it boils down to is... We charge them, the, the government charges the companies more, so they charge more, requiring more dividends, which requires slightly different subsidies, which then cycle down into making the cigarettes more, and they get more money from the government. Or put very, very simply, money. Seriously, you, ever, you want to understand anything in human society, follow the money. 
At least some of the trans gonna turn around at some point here. Nice view though. As it happens, I am also mildly allergic to nicotine. And cigarette smoke will make it hard for me to, to breathe. So, you know, if you want to smoke, that's fine. Just do it nowhere near me and don't come interact with me afterwards. And don't come within five feet of me. And if you do, I'll kill you. All right, so. Hey, we turned around. Yeah, I had a friend who I used to go uh, help her figure out stuff with regards to her WoW account and computing. She wasn't very tech savvy, so I'd help her out with stuff like that. Anyways, I had to have, like, I had to wear specific clothing to go over there, which would immediately go in the wash because her, her whole house was just smoke. You, you know that particular pungent scent, right? Well, here we are in Papachuia Village, excuse me. Papuchia? I summered here once when I was young, but I haven't been here since. Want to go swimming? Do I ever? Well, I can't exactly do that in my current state, but when I get my body back, we should go back here to swim. And anyway, let's get going. Okay. Welcome to Pap Papuchia. There we go. Pap the village at sea. Our village leaders are clairvoyant who can see into the future. We call her the wise one. <laughs> no, no, but, but listen, Nintendo has assured us, Frieza, they're definitely not a couple. There's no vibes here. Yes, I'm playing this on the Wii U. How does this even play on the Wii U? I, I'm guessing it's just the stylus of the Wii U. Because I don't know how else you do that. Yeah, as I was gonna say, like, is there a mic on the Wii U? Considering how often you have to use the damn thing. I do try to be tolerant about the whole smells and thing. And I get it, because there is one thing. One thing that I like that causes some unpleasant uh, smells. No, I'm, I'm emulating the crap out of this director of justice. Uh, that causes some unpleasant smells for other people, which I then you know, refrain from when I'm around those people. Can anyone guess what it is? But yes, I'm totally playing this on a DS. As, here, here, look, look, I'm, I'm just, I'm playing it right now. Yes, playing the game. Popcorn. Pirates often show up in the waters around the village. In fact, all the local men have been kidnapped. Look at that one guy. Look at that one guy. <sighs> so, we've actually put some thought over the years uh, on, on random talkie streams into how you'd port 3DS stuff into a non-3DS thing. It's easier for the 3DS than the DS because the 3D gimmick is barely relevant for 3DS games, so you don't have to worry about that, really. And you don't really have a lot of touch functionality with the 3DS that isn't completely optional. So in other words, the Switch, which, if you remember, has touchpad functionality, would function just fine for, like, 99.9% .9 of 3DS games. So there, done, fixed. DS games are trickier because DS games lean on the stylus hard. What we would have to do is we would have to come up with an emulator that would then run on the Switch 2 or whatever, which would do exactly what I'm doing right here. Either via touchpad or just via the right analog, which would probably be the easier answer. Boom, there's your there's your input for the stylus. So you would need some kind of vehicle. You'd need some kind of program or 
or shell or emulator, or whatever word you want to use there, in order to make that work. But it could work. And once you get it set up, you're good for all the DS games. Hey, 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 look at me. I got something very important to ask you. You're describing one word. Would it be cute or plain? Just stand there. I'm like, say something that makes sense. Something like cute. Okay, so uh, we are physically incapable of doing that. So we're just going to leave that little interaction forever. Thanks to the wise one, it's been a bumper crop year for fish. We owe it all to her. Oh, I'm definitely playing this on the original NES. Let's see. Eh, nothing really worth grabbing. Don't worry, I would never play games on anything other than the original hardware. Which... I know there's purists out there. And I will not give my opinion on that. But can I just say, it actually irritates me so much that so many streamers, like even much, much bigger streamers than me, insist on original hardware pretty much specifically to bypass the legality issues. Pleased you could make it. Of course, the stars foretold your arrival. How do I know your name? The stars foretold that as well. I know everything. Listen, I I, I don't want no shit. It was I was it was I was young. Okay, the the chocolate it was it tasted so good. I had to steal more. I had to, I didn't mean to steal the cookie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mom. I stole the cookie. Actually, I never stole cookies as a kid. No, I stole Kahlua on accident. I sense your heart is heavy with deep concern. Is that so? Uh, yeah, sure. I thought so. Yeah. Do you want me to tell your fortune? I'm going to ask you some questions. So I ask them with a strong, clear voice. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't do this. Don't make me do this. Are you a boy or girl? Uh, <laughs> yes. Return to me when you feel the threads of feet. No! Okay, okay, hold on. Let's check the walkthrough. Let's see how mandatory this is, okay? Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can uh, skip. Let's see if we can um, do that thing that I do all the time in Metroid that I can't think of the name of. No, I didn't steal the cookies, are You kidding? I've had my own money since I was like five? Five or six. I buy my own candy, thank you. I got picky too i got precise my mother used to be so proud of me because i would go and make my own money sequence breaking thank you and i would actually sit down and figure out exactly how i could maximize the amount of candy i could with the amount of money i had candy bars are always like way too expensive you got to go for the little side stuff the stuff they sell in jars that's where you can get the maximum amount of candy Hang on, before before we commit to that, Freezer. Before we commit to that. Let's go. Here. 
here. Orange, yellow, orange, blue. Right here, I know it's right here. I'm staring at the screenshot and everything. Okay, so it looks like it's not letting a screen break. Our sequence break that. Is there's another trigger which hasn't happened yet either. Monsters. You have to push the envelope to see what you can get away with, Gum Gum, because you see these people are children. And like children, they will try to push that envelope as hard and as far as they can. Go meet Carbon then. <laughs> like how that crab's like, wait! Ah, too late. certain if that was intended, but eh, whatever. It's the dreaded claw crab. See, now you're going to die. Shouldn't have gotten in my way. Never get in my way. I can already tell this is probably going to be a thing, so let's just do this. So 
problem. It's not my fault you wanted your arms torn off, okay? You're the one who came after me. Listen, I like big claws, and I cannot lie again. Go. I guess it's just a, di a double diamond. There's not a lot of options here. That or whatever. Yeah, Dark Souls, Sierra. Carbons seem to be here. Hey, what's that? I don't know. Let's see what it is. I'm at Papa Papucci. Oh my god, I hate that pronunciation. Papucci Village, visiting my sky friends. Two bed carbons in here. Let's go to Papuchia. Let's look for him there. Okay. So I guess this is the sequence I broke. Without even meaning to. Silly me. I always feel bad for dogs, Yura. Dogs like entertainment like plenty of animals do, but they're intelligent enough to really like complex entertainment. Now, how many dogs can you picture right in your head who are just lazily sleeping, sitting around, mostly sl asleep because there's nothing for them to do? Dolphins. Monsters. That's what pets should be. Delicious. Look over there. 
The white-haired fellow floating in the air. Could he be the locomo carbon? Yeah, his signs are good. Carbon, carbon! Uh, he's in some kind of daze that doesn't seem to hear us. Maybe the wise one will know what to do. All right, let's see if we can sequence break. Really quick, really quick. Just while we're here. Hey! Screw the mic section. Screw you, mic section. And all your Romanos. All right. Yeah. No. It... No. It. God dang it! Oh, it's because I literally can't click it right now. The nerve. There I was, flying high in the sky, unwinding. Then you play the song of birds, and I come crashing down. Do you know that song has the power to call birds to you? That sounds very useless. What's that? You say you went to the ocean sanctuary. It's true. We saw the note you were there. Did you not hear me? I was yelling your name. Don't be so upset. I wasn't just lollygagging, you know. I was talking to the birds about the different places they've seen. I didn't know you were friends with the birds, but never mind that. We're in dire need of your help. Hmph, <laughs> let me guess. You want to risk all the spirit tracks. So I'm going to relax a little longer, but fine. Take me to the ocean sanctuary. Okay, it's right there. Can we just... Okay. So, I don't want to imply anything here. I just had a completely random thought. I was trying to think of what Zelda announcement we could get from the upcoming Nintendo Direct that would be the least interesting. And the first thought that occurred to me was Ocarina on the Switch. Now, don't mistake me, that'd be cool at all. But it's such a default answer, right? It's like, hey, let's take the most popular thing and then dump it on, you know, our current system. Hey, there you go. Boom. Or a mobile Zelda game. Oh. But anyways, that's not the important part. That line of thought led me to thinking about something else. How many... You. Can I help you? Can I help you? Oh my god. How many of you are familiar with Grezzo? Now, you, you are, whether you've really thought about it or not, but you might not be familiar with the name of the company. Grezzo did the Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time re well, remasters on the 3DS. They also helped, did a lot of additional work for Triforce Heroes, whatever that's worth. They also made a game that you've probably never heard of called Ever Oasis, which is actually a pretty good game. And they did work for... Why are you breaking all my windows, freaking pirates? You're gonna pay for those, right? Um, 
They also did work on the uh, Luigi's Mansion 3DS remaster. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And, uh, sorry, this is taking more of my concentration than I thought because these controls are so terrible! And, well, I mean, look at the screen right now. Okay. Uh, one second. Him. Oh, come on! Anyways, they also made another game you're probably familiar with, which we've actually reviewed. The Link's Awakening Remaster. Ah, oh, that's some backswing. I get that, Brigham. Point being, they're one of Nintendo's go-to second-party developers for making stuff like that. They also haven't been doing anything for several years. So, may or may not mean anything. That's it. That took me way too long to get that out. I apologize. I didn't expect to have to deal with pirates in the meantime. It would be in their style to do the Oracles games, but honestly, it could be whatever. I mean, again, they did do Ocarina and Majora. Yeah, they did, they did that Metopia thing. That was three years ago now. I just, just come on, game. Come on. Game, game. God damn it. If you ever just watch me run into the enemy for a second, it's because I'm trying to attack him and failing at it. This is for a bit of perspective. So hang on. We all know some of the terrible options they could do. What would be your personal favorite pick for a remaster? Not a remake. But a solid touch-up done in a modern system. Fix control issues, fix playability issues, add some quality of life features, etc. Oh, thank you. You really saved my hide there, Lua. Now the, the beard. Come, come. Not that bit of unpleasantness is over. Let's get to the sanctuary. Now, in terms of sheer availability, I would lean towards uh, Phantom Hourglass, um, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Link Between Worlds. All of those are functionally console locked, and that's the problem. But of course, that doesn't really answer the question, does it? That's not what I want most. It's just the one I think could use it the most. Oh yeah, and Four Swords Adventures, which I keep forgetting. Well, dumb fault, isn't it? Consequently, that would probably be my pick, Four Swords Adventures. Every, every living being possesses energy, and this energy is similar to the energy that powers the spirit tracks. When a person's heart is especially happy or grateful, then Skyward Sword comes out. You can tell they were making Skyward Sword at the same time here. His energy levels become particularly strong. Energy lives in the hearts of everyone, even feeble old fellows like me. I don't express it well, but the bottom line is I appreciate your help. Please take this. You plan to continue your journey by train, do you not? You must always go forth with people's hearts in your mind. You make people happy, their spirits emit energy. And then they go, oh, and this weird thing comes out, which would probably be very unpleasant. Hyrule Warriors and Hyrule Warriors 2, Gum Gum, two very different games. Oh, excuse me.
Oh, whoops. Uh. I guess I have to go through Crabville again. Yeah, Triforce Heroes, a game that exists, uh, is also console locked. I'm going to admit something now that I was going to save for later. I mean, I am still going to talk about this later. I'm nervous about Four Swords Adventures. I haven't actually replayed it in quite a while. Uh, at this point, close to 15 years. I used to replay it constantly. It was one of my most replayed games. But like I said, it's been a minute. And, I mean... I've been talking it up. And anytime I talk something up, I immediately start doubting myself. Like, oh god, it's probably actually crap. Oh, yeah, we have to do this. This wonderful, wonderful thing. There's another way to play it, I see. is the problem with Four Swords right there, I see. That misconception is why that game didn't sell well. Because the game does... I can't believe I did that first try. The game does have access to a co-op mode. I have never played that game co-op, and honestly, never will. I know what you're thinking. How do you control four players at once with just one controller? Brilliantly. You want to talk about a Zelda game that's going to get a lot of pluses for controls... It's Four Swords Adventures. A portion of the tracks has been restored. Ocean Temple is on the ocean floor. Go to the ocean temple. Go to the ocean floor. How dare you question the spirit's strength. The ocean floor is covered with rails. Of course the train can move further there. Go to get down there is... Oh, I can't remember where the entrance is. Oh, well. I wrote it down. Here, take this with you. Thanks for making me press extra buttons to get you to tell me something you could have just told me. God, dude. Yeah, trust me, I've been spending... When, when did Four Swords Adventures come out? Hang on, let's, let's look up the timeline here. Forgive me for sounding a little bit tired, ISE, but I have been praising Four Swords Adventures for 20 years! God damn, 2004! I have been talking up that game for 20 years, and every single time I bring it up... How many of you were in the single-digit range when Four Swords Adventures came out? I have I have spent every single time I bring up Four Swords Adventure, someone says, isn't that multiplayer only? Or, how do you play that with just one player? And I'm like... God damn it. I don't blame you, of course. As I said, it really is Nintendo's fault. But I'm trying really hard not to talk about a game we're not playing it. That's, that's a really bad habit we have on this show. All right, we're going to play the entire Final Fantasy series. What do we talk about from FF1 through 12? We talk about FF13. Non-stop. So, quit it. <laughs> I had to make that a rule back during the original marathon, if you remember. 
Which you don't, because that was over 10 years ago now. I've been doing this job for a while. The Four Swords Adventures is actually an interesting one, because it's a near-perfect mix of Link to the Past and Wind Waker. It's interesting to talk about. But anyways... I mean, this game right here came out in 2009. Anybody wants to feel old. That's a good question. What do we talk about when we're playing WoW? FF14. Yeah, we'll talk about FF14 constantly. I mean, by that point, uh, Dawn Trail will have come out. Oh, sorry. I don't know who you are. I knew it, Retro. You're European. Bunny, bunny, bunny. Got it. Oh, that was close. Actually, that's my third, I believe, I see. Let's see. I can actually double-check that. Yep, three. Two more, and I get something. I forget what, but it is something we want. We could have had it already. But I suck. I'm very German. There is no joy. There's only efficiency and the destruction of our enemies. Repression. Build an empire. Build an empire, build an empire, Auschwitz, Auschwitz, build an empire! And then we celebrate with a world war, and then we lose the whole empire throughout the war. I also can't do a German accent at all. Oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Listen, I can't be British. I give my opinions about political matters. And if there's one thing we know about the British, is that they should never give any opinion about anything political. See, that joke works twice. Piss off, please. See, now you know we're being British because we're being raided by pirates. I do love me some British cuisine. A picture I'm holding up. A big plate of Indian food. Am I wrong? Yeah, 
yeah, debarkeration day. Alright, come on, luck. Don't. That was actually a guess shot. I don't think I've ever had French food. Except for eggs, of course. And that probably sounds like a joke, and it super isn't. If there's one thing I've learned a lot about French cuisine, it's that they love eggs. Like, a lot. Also, obligatory croissant reference. I don't think I could do escargot. Texture. I don't like slimy in general. Uh, game, game, game. Get shot out here, game. Oh, I didn't realize you were still following me. Holy crap, and we're dead! Wow! I... okay. Ugh, yeah, I can't do shellfish either. No, thank you. Kept our rabbits, right? Yes. Excellent. My grandmother used to eat uh, rabbits they caught because she lived in a particularly poor part of the states during rationing. There was a lot of make-do. Her mother lived through the Great Depression. I mean, if there's one thing I do not regret about living in the United States, it's the food. And that's not a fat joke or a gross joke or whatever other dumb joke you're going to make there. Because one of the things the United States is legitimately well known for is having a huge variety of different cuisines and food accessibility here. Like, if I want French food, I could probably find a French restaurant around here like that. We meet again. I heard the ocean spirit tracks had returned, so I came to see myself. It's just a rumor, but I hear there are even tracks that can run under the water. Oh, and guess what else? Guess, guess. They say there are sculptures direct to big noises. Yes, yes. Cool. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, if I want good Japanese food, the best Japanese food I've ever had was in Vegas. The second best Japanese food I ever had was in Kansas. Say that what you will. Actually, I, ha I have had katsu curry. Some of the, um... It's not Indian. But I can't remember what it is. Taiwan restaurants around here? No, that's not right. It's not Taiwan. I know it's Japanese, but it's not actually... Uh, like, the Japanese restaurants don't have it. It's something else. Either way, it doesn't matter. I've had katsu curry. It's good stuff.
Oh god, how bad was it, Ross? I gotta know. Go away, you stupid... lot of rats. So I think that's the statue. I don't know where it triggers, so we're just gonna keep going. Is that a trigger? I can see the deadly. It's that one right there. Okay, game, I need some kind of feedback that I've done the right thing here. Salt and pepper is spicy. Yeah, I actually do know a few people like that. Only a few. Now, again, I do know someone with geographic tongues so that might be partially related. But no, you know me, I love me some spice. I've always believed, although I don't actually have proof of this, that spice tolerance is a muscle. It's something you uh, flex and train and, and work at. Something you want to. Like, I grew up in Southern California from about one to seven. And, uh, yeah. I had access to Mexican food on a regular basis. Again, to me it was a treat to have a bowl of jalapeno-infused carrots. I can't do ghost peppers. Screw that. Real ghost peppers. Then again, that's another thing that a lot of people tend to mistake. Most people don't actually understand that there's a difference between spice and flavor. Or that is to say, heat and flavor. Might be a better way to phrase that. Because if you ever want to just be like, oh man, I totally like spice, then just spray some pepper spray on your tongue. There you go. Boom. That's fine. No, I like things that have good flavor to them. I forgot to... Apparently there is a cutscene that I was supposed to get, which I did not get, according to this walkthrough. That's cool. Okay. So let's just go back here. I've been stuck on this for a while, I just realized. Sorry, I shouldn't say we when it's a screw up. I have been stuck on this for some time. I'm gonna say we when it's a positive thing. Sure credit. Nothing? Yeah. 
There it goes. Jesus Christ. Okay. One of three down. I'm going to indulge in a save state because this has already taken way too long. Like, we've been here like 20 minutes trying to activate these stupid gems. Actually, yeah, it's been about 20 minutes now. Feels we move slower on the water, too. Why there? Why is that the trigger point? Maybe it's not slow on the water, maybe it just looks that way, I don't know. deliberately not look at this one. See if that helps or hinders. Let's look at the damn thing. Wow. Any further, I have to link this comic. I've been sitting here waiting to link this comic for like six hours or something like that since before the first, like before the second shift started. Hem. 
Yes, it's another awkward zombie. Uh... where indie developers had started getting into oh yeah we have torpedoes in the water uh ds style graphics interesting approach it doesn't surprise me though i apparently can't shoot to save my life Literally, I suppose. I assume uh, Johnson Doe means this kind of thing. Resuminating. good cannon, is what I'm trying to say. How many cannons do you know can shoot cannonballs and torpedoes? Guided torpedoes, no less. Equally. So who's ready for hell? Don't worry, I actually remember a, 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 a stretch for how to get through this section. A strategy. Try to get through the stretch of this game. But, uh, this can be mean, especially if you're not ready for it. No, not these stupid squid guys. Something much worse than the squid guys. I'd say there's at least some new island nations left in the Wind Waker era. Triaxia. This isn't that far, geographically speaking, from Hyrule. At least from what they imply. So here's the Tier 2 trains. These trains... Actually, the bot's off there, exactly. I turned it off earlier. Yeah, so these are faster than us, and they will home in on us rather than just following a route or a cycle. You may or may not notice, but that guy over there is, in fact, catching us. We don't have the danger music yet. There's the second one. And he's a normal dude. But he's still going to provide some issues. that go right over his head? You saw that, right? Just right over his head. Okay, so I'm gonna die from that. Thanks. Thanks for that game. Appreciate you wasting all my time there.
You saw the shot just go right over the guy's head, right? Sometimes these just don't home, and I'm not really sure why. Go faster. I love this, by the way. They pretty much flat out mandate you do the long way around, the route we, you could see us doing over here. Because if you try to beeline it directly, you'll run right into the dark trains, and they will murder your face off. So you have to go the slow way. And there's nothing really to do on the slow way, it's just going the slow way. So this is, this is the literal definition of padding. good at this point. Like I said, there's a reasonably reliable way to get through this, but it does involve going the long ass way around. That's cool. Of course, their trains can go through each other. Why can't they? Don't be ridiculous. We made it. <laughs> We're done with the 30... I think it was actually 40 minutes of just getting from point A to point B. Oh, my God. Ugh. I need a nap after that. Uh... Ah, what? I'm awake, I'm awake. Built twice today. Okay, dungeon three. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm nostalgic hearing this song again, you know. It brings me back to yesterday. Let's see if I can re-engage my brain a little bit here. The second is above here. The fourth is above here. The third is above here.
and the first. Yep, okay, I figured. Ah, we're gonna we're gonna call that room nope. do happen to have bombs, because we bothered to buy those. Honestly, I wish I could put stuff on the map in a lot of games, Euro. There's a reason I give positives to games to let me do that. You know, like Breath of the Wild. Or, uh, Metro Dread. Okay. Well, I can tell which item we're getting in this dungeon. It's a high bar, so... shoot me. Random shoot-looking things in the distance. Hey, Torchinator, and goodbye, ISC. I, I do the thing for you, but I can't right now. I'm sorry. In the late aughts? Uh, no. They were, like, doing the exact opposite of that, Sean. You kidding me? Like, look at what they were doing on the GameCube era, right? Obviously, we've got things like Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. Uh, and Twilight Princess, of course. Twilight Princess was a little safe. But they were also willing to farm things out and try things like Four Swords Adventures and Minish Cap. Mario side of things, they did Mario Sunshine, which was a very different structural game from, like, say, Mario 64, or the games before it. In the much Metroid branch, they actually had a Metroid FPS, which was just kind of landmark at the time. Pikmin was trying its own thing. There was something else I was going to mention. Um, and of course, I can't remember what. I can't remember now. Doesn't matter. looking, but it looks like we're safe. Well, give me, give me some examples here, Sean, because if we're not talking about the same time period, then I don't know what you're talking about, which means I need it samples. Galaxy 2, excellent game. Really pushed things forward. Originally designed as an expansion pack. Better than Galaxy 1 in almost every way. What else you got? 
You see a Skyward Sword, I'm gonna raise an eyebrow at you. Is that like a living whip? Try this the other way then. Okay. 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 What do you want to do, game? I am apparently supposed to let him drag me and then swing at him. I've just been failing at that. Yeah, I, I just can't agree that Skyward was a by-the-numbers uh, game, even structurally. In fact, it was probably a little bit too experimental, as we'll showcase soonish. Yeah, ignore the controls for a second. Let's just push that out of our mind. Skyward was weird. Like, all right, let's do, let's try to emulate the C from Wind Waker, but smaller and less involved in every way. Oh, and with terrible controls. All right, now we're going to constantly mandate you go back and forth between two worlds. But one of those worlds is minuscule and pathetic, and you have to do it constantly because padding. The other world is like pseudo open world, but has to be done in a specific order, even though it doesn't look like it. And also, I hope you like redoing the same dungeons over and over. It's a whole thing. We'll get there. Skyward was is such a weird game. It makes so much sense that they had so much development, uh, so many development problems with that game. Well, I'm physically incapable of playing the Wii version, Genko, so yes. So, this is the snake thing? We're gonna call it the snake thing. I don't know what else to call this thing. Sorry, I shouldn't talk too negatively about Skyward. Because again, my my memories of that game are horrifically uh, negative because of the pain that game caused me. So I apologize. I'll walk that back. Yeah, Lucas wasn't using it. Oh my god. Real quick, how many of you have seen the latest indie film? Okay, no spoilers, but that ending. What in God's name were they thinking with that? Okay, that's it. Just had to get that on my chest really quick. We're cool, we're cool. No, not Crystal Skull. The latest indie film. Yeah, I don't recommend you watch it, Bregman. Let me put it to you this way. Crystal Skull was inoffensive compared to the new film. I actually liked Maverick quite a bit. Top Gun 2. Like, a lot, a lot. It did something I value a great deal in filmmaking. It actually respected my time and intelligence. There was a lot of showing and not telling. And they, like, the, uh, 
I, I know it's kind of a, a low bar, but it's kind of rare that I'll have a film which will have an actor, you know, act out how they're feeling rather than just telling me how they're feeling, you know? Yeah, Cruz is a weirdly good actor. He's not given the option to do good acting as often as he probably should. But when he is, he tends to put out good stuff. He reminds me of Arnold Schwarzenegger, for that sake. Although, the difference there is Arnold Schwarzenegger was a very good comedic actor. It's another one of those weird things people tend to forget about. That's interesting. Can I just throw them? Jesus, okay. Bee larva. Gross, but okay. Anyway, Sean, sorry. I never really addressed your question because I was still trying to understand your question. Let me address what I believe is the question you're asking me. Nintendo was in a situation after the GameCube where there was a lot of pressure from... That's a good word. Morons. To try and standardize the company and make it more like other corporations. Thankfully, that didn't happen because several of the people in charge decided to change course a little bit in several directions and try to think more long term rather than trying to uh, gut the company in order to try and make a buck today go Nintendo having said that part of that strategy involved uh, what you say as, as you say playing safe the Wii is the perfect example of that ignore the games on the Wii for just a second the Wii itself is a perfect example of Nintendo trying to play it a little bit more uh, safe trying to go back to basics and go with a, an audience that they know they can make money off of, and they did. The Wii was the hell of a, of a war chest for Nintendo and gave them a lot of stability for several years. Look up the best-selling Wii game sometime. It might amuse you. I'll give you a hint, it's the one that was bundled with the Wii. At least I think it's the time. It might be the second best-selling Wii game, hang on. Let me actually double-check my figures there really quick. But I'm pretty sure it's Wii Sports. Yep, by a huge margin, because it was bundled with it. But Wii Sports was fun, wasn't it? Like, I bet most of you in chat played Wii Sports and actually enjoyed it for what it was. Like, I mean, it's not like the, the super amazingest thing ever, but it was still fun. And that's the thing. Oh no, I'm doing the wrong thing. There we go. Wii Sports appealed to an, a, a gargantuan uh, range of players. That was strange. Oh, I gotta wait. Okay. Not a lot of people remember this, but there was actually a. There's a really big push to uh, try and focus on the hardcore crowd on the GameCube, which I know sounds funny if you know anything about your gaming history, but it's true. They're trying to, to, to market towards the adult audience, the darker, grittier, edgier games that only adults play. Death to fun. That didn't work. The Wii kind of course-corrected a little bit too hard. Yeah, I saw Trihexia. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense if you think if you think about the GameCube and a lot of its titles. It's like, yeah. That was always stupid because, you know, um, Nintendo has never had any difficulties having games aimed at all markets. And that's the thing. We've actually talked about this topic before. The thing Nintendo does best is they don't aim for kids, and they don't aim for adults, and they don't aim for old people, and they don't aim for anybody. 
They aim for everybody. You know what the second best-selling Wii game is of all time? I'll give you a hint. It's Mario Kart. Because of course it is. Because Mario Kart appeals to everyone. And that is honestly what Nintendo is best at. Mario Wonder, to use a very recent example. Who's Mario Wonder's audience? Everyone. So the Wii was a bit of an overcourse correction, but you notice they then kind of smooth that out a bit. Take that stamp. I suppose I have to say thank you to Jovan. I guess. Let me get this stamp first. Thank you, Jovan, very, very much. As always. Ah. Give me a moment, I'll jot that down. Or dealer's choice. And yeah, the Wii U tried a little bit... Woo, there. Uh, in, it, it, to once again try to, to pull back to that serious, gritty thing. And it makes sense, because their competition during that era was what? The Xbox 360 and the PS3? I mean, what were they clamoring for? What were those two consoles marketed at? I mean, that's also when the Mountain Dew thing started going, getting going really hard, if you remember that. Uh, okay. I'm not even going to get into the fact that the Wii U was terribly marketed. That's... I mean, duh. Essentially. Uh... What do you think? Yeah, the Wii U killed a lot of their Wii loyalty. Honestly, and, and I mean this with sincerity, if the Switch wasn't the smash hit that it is, there's a decent chance Nintendo would have gotten a lot worse in the last few years. Make no mistake, a lot of companies that we have a degree of value or loyalty in only retain their level of quality so long as the money people are kept happy. The Wii U wasn't marketed well. It was a great system. Like, legitimately. The Wii U is actually one of my favorite consoles overall. The only reason it doesn't really hold that position the way it used to is because of the fact that so much of its content has been ported off of it by now. But it had a good, surprisingly good controller. And... Uh, oh, this looks like fun. Um, and a really solid, uh, really solid library. And, I don't know, just the whole thing gelled with me. I don't know what else to add to that. Three handles sit before you pull only the one farthest from your grasp. Okay. Well, we actually tried to do that once, Ross. We failed. Because, I mean, how you review a game like that is you review the tools and the availability and the content. You don't really do much elsewise. The problem is, I wanted to turn that into a game design stream, but nobody was interested, so that went nowhere immediately. Uh, nowadays it's someone that I don't even remember the name of that. Okay. I believe it's this one. No, Bowser is the uh, NOA guy. It's not so much vetoed as that it's probably not going to happen and I wouldn't waste your money trying. Besides, we already streamed Mario Maker 2. John Ganondorf. There we go. 
Uh, no, we did. It was just under the old system, look, so it doesn't count for nowadays. Yeah, the reason you don't hear much about Mr. Bowser is because he's not Reggie. And that is absolutely the nicest way I could phrase that. No offense to the man, I'm sure he's fine, except I'm not sure if he's fine. I don't know anything about him. Reggie... Reggie we could talk about. That's a good question, Act. Yeah, Reggie was a dork and owned that. And a lot of people resonate with that pretty well. It helps that Reggie was also the same as Iwata in one very big way. He was a gamer. He was a gaming dork. And yeah, Reggie was the guy who would do, like... You remember when he did the Smash thing with Iwata? You remember when he was like the Reggie bot? I don't even remember when he, remember what team did that. Do you remember that? That's Reggie right there. He was the dude who would goof around because he thought it was funny. Yeah, my puppet body is ready. Nintendo 64. Nintendo 65! Don't mistake me, I don't, I don't want to blow too much smoke up his ass. But I liked Reggie. Given the kinds of people we tend to get in the positions like that, he, he was good. He was a good president. He was a good rep. We could have a lot worse than Reggie. I should know. Yeah, Reggie fils -Aimé. Not spelled like that at all. I really... After Starfield, we, we had such a long discussion about that during Starfield. I really believe that Todd Howard was at one point like Reggie. And his, his head just got too big. Just straight up. He bought into his own hype. Now, that is a theory. I don't know that for total certainty, but that is what I think actually happened. Though. They're dead. There's a lot of things to pull here. Yeah, my whip appears to be a snake. Uh, okay. No, wise philosopher. I have talked about it briefly, but no. Um, I don't have a lot of time in my life, so being able to just watch a show isn't really feasible right now. Or, like, possibly ever again. Um, having said that, I do think too much noise has been generated about it, which is probably the biggest reason why that show has been succeeding. No, seriously, think about it. Like, you cannot tell me the marketing departments have not been buying into that tremendously, because they totally have. Okay, aiming that's a little different than I thought. Phil Spencer's interesting. He's... Let, let's start with this. He's not as good as Reggie fils or Iwata. But Spencer was one of the better ones. Now, let me, let me clarify that for just a second. Spencer was a rich asshole who also happened to be a gaming dork. And so he kind of had that going for him, you know? Um, he, kinda, he, he was definitely still a gamer. He definitely did have a legitimate 
an honest passion in game design and gaming, and making sure that games keep being a thing. Like, that was very much something he always pushed for. In fact, uh, if you pay any attention to the behind-the-scenes boardroom drama, politics, and economics of Microsoft, which I don't blame you if you don't because it's really, really boring, Phil Spencer has been fighting most of the other executives off in Microsoft for years at this point to keep the Microsoft gaming division going. It is only this year he has finally started to lose that battle. Yeah, he was the Rick Berman, absolutely. Less of a misogynistic prick, but same concept. Hit. No, they do not, Lope. Or perhaps miraculously, I don't think they care. Like, it's one of those really awful thought processes. Think about this for a second. I want you to imagine. This is this is gonna sound like a really bad analogy because it is, but imagine for a moment that you can make more money. You, in real life, personally, all you have to do is ensure that some art project in Guatemala gets shut down. Or in Antarctica. Let's let's prove something that nobody, nobody listening to this is from Antarctica. And if you are, what are you doing watching me? Go get warm. Watch out for polar bears. So there's this art project in our Antarctica. Now, your company, your, your team, your, 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 uh, your staff is responsible for maintaining all of the stuff that's making that art project happen, right? All of the logistics for getting the resources out there, all of the uh, accounting to make sure that the people are paid properly, all of the throughput to make sure that you're reporting all this stuff to the boards above you. You're handling all the bureaucracy side of things to make this art project happen. Who cares if it gets shut down? What does it matter to you? You could make a whole lot more money, get a much bigger bonus, and have much better stock options if you decide to sabotage, screw over, or otherwise squeeze that art project by trying to turn it into a financial resource. And if you fail, you could just shut it down and claim that as an increase of revenue for your staff. Because that's the mentality these people have. They are 100% divorced from the things that they're actually in charge of affecting, because those things don't matter to them. They're off in Antarctica. All they're doing is thinking about their specific financial situation for the next couple of months. Please remember that most of these people, if they get fired tomorrow, they're set for life. They have a nice house and a nice cushy retirement pension plan and lots of investment. So there's no incentive. Yeah, I'm kidding, Jobin. There's no incentive. One of the only things I agree with that guy about. There's no incentive to give a damn about the thing that you're in charge of. And there's no detriment to not. There's no stake here. Now, we talk about greed. But as with most things, greed is a gradient. Greed is the kind of thing where... Not every person in, that, in, in the money people kind of avenue have the kind of greed we mean when we say that kind of thing. But the ones that do, those are the problem. Because the thing is, the people who are truly greedy, who are in the money people, they're the ones who push everyone else. They're the ones who establish the standard. If those people, if those people who are absolutely in, in desirous of all the money, push for a specific project, or are willing to cut costs in ways nobody else is, or are willing to show are willing to undercut are willing to be scummy or ruthless or brutal what's going to happen is if other people you know don't do that they'll fall behind and probably get replaced or just straight up fired because someone somewhere is going to say well why aren't you doing what they're doing they're doing their fiduciary responsibility what are you doing and so while the actual number of truly avaristic people is relatively low it doesn't matter because everyone is incentivized to act in that fashion in a 
row. Okay. Bobby Kotick is a truly avaristic person and a legitimately evil man. He probably should be brought up on criminal charges for several different aspects of his life. Absolutely, Javin. The Xbox Game Pass was a great idea that's been slowly getting worse over time, and it's absolutely because of money people. Have you ever heard the quote, yeah, but what have you done for me lately? That's a mentality a lot of these people tend to legitimately have. Any company can recover from just about anything, Loke. Like, I, I, <laughs> I've studied Marvel and DC. Companies can recover from really, really bad stuff. But, uh, will they recover? Probably not. Okay, so that's, uh, one... And then three... Well, you see Pillars of Snow. I have no idea. I don't feel like being funny. Ah! I'm surprised that actually worked. And here it is... Thing here, okay. The other way I like to explain the mentality behind these kind of people, because you look at them and it's like, they're so obviously stupid. Why are they so obviously stupid? Well, it's because you're looking at it like someone who cares. And I know that sounds strange, but let me try this in a different direction. You ever play Civilization? The game. The video game. It's a good game. I recommend it. There's a few Civilization games. Obviously, you can play just about any of them, and it'll count. Give me the rupees! Jesus Christ game. Um, and when you're playing Civilization, you care about the well-being of your civilization, because that's who you're playing as. So, it's easy... I know this is a weird comparison, but just... It's easy to look at these kind of large-scale, long-term decisions and think, well, that's stupid. Because obviously you're thinking of it from the perspective of the company, or the culture, or the industry, or the civilization, or even the species. They're not thinking of it that way. Their perspective is this one dude, or this one gal. And they're just interested in this one thing, which is themselves, of course. Them and theirs. You get it. And they want to make sure that they've got as much as they can because it doesn't really matter to them at a certain point. Why would it? Good greedy people. Well, I've seen those in fiction. Star Trek has a couple of those, believe it or not. I'm sure those kind of people exist in real life. Really. Really. Historically. At some point, historically. I 
I will admit, I also find the idea of a good greedy person or a good billionaire absolutely fascinating. Um, I've listed a few uh, examples of this over the years, but probably my favorite is actually Ollie. Oliver from DC Comics. Dude has gone back and forth between being uh, Green Arrow. Has gone back and forth from being super rich to super poor to super rich to super poor several times across his career because he'll make tons and tons of money. You know, he, he inherited, first of all. And then he spent and burnt all of it in getting stuff done and getting himself set up and helping with the league. And then he would make more money and then he'd spend and then he'd make more money and then he'd spend it. He just keeps going back and forth between rich and poor. It's actually kind of funny. Fits him, too. That's a door that's in my way. Bruce, in the comics, actually semi-recently, like 10 years ago, had a whole thing where he went from being a billionaire to a millionaire. these fish have swords in them is there some kind of cultural thing behind that because the swordfish god dang it there we go Bobby Kotick isn't an evil man because he's a billionaire. He's an evil man because he's an evil man. I agree with Javan on that point. I, I have said for decades at this point, Howard is not corrupt. No, just like a second too early. like the time wasting in this part of the, the game don't they my goodness it probably is telling that i don't have a lot of memories of this sequence of the game yeah i'll admit um a little bit of frustration which is why i hammer on that that phrase all the time because one of the most commonly stated uh sayings that I tend to hear is power corrupts and entire fictional settings and real life really like to, to pretend like that's an absolute fact of reality and that irritates me for obvious reasons really I you gonna let me do anything game or are you just gonna show me this really fancy cutscene Boy. 
Come here. Yeah, the Zelda rain, get out of here. It's my house. Yeah, it's the Dune thing, Glitch. Well, I'll admit, I didn't read about that thing in Dune until after I came up with that quote. So in my defense, Dune was there first. But god damn it. <laughs> I hate gnats. I hate gnats so much. Shortcut. Okay, boss time. This should be fun. I mean, I don't even like the book, so I'm not the person to talk about that. These oh. books. That's not what I said to do, but thanks for that. Bit of tutorialization here on how the boss is gonna go. Especially that part. Yeah, Javin. Well, what about Skynet? Checkmate. Fight top. Okay, fair enough, Javin. Point removed. such a lovely eye. Makes me want to stab it! Always with the eyes in this franchise. Yeah, think about it. Having a needle shoved in your eye would probably hurt like hell. Not as much as a sword, of course, but... Except that. Canonically, Link just died. So that means now we're playing Majora's Mask. I'm just joking. That theory was always dumb. Even if it wasn't jossed by an actual statement by, I believe that was Anuma. No, that was Oizumi, wasn't it? Either way. Point being, Link wasn't dead. Moving on. Oh my goodness. Oh, 
Oh, shoot. Uh, okay, well, we're dead. I resized the window on accident. That completely threw me. I actually forgot I had the heel song for this, because... I don't know, for some reason I thought I only got one of those ever. Speaking of, the three hard problem returns. At least boss areas actually have a refill spot next to them. Although, if we had been getting all the extra hearts, we'd be three hearts down right now. I dodged the tentacle. I think this is the first dungeon I'm going to give a negative to, Rex. Not just a negative, but a negative. Some of the puzzles were just too time-consuming, too long to reset, too long to backtrack. Like that final major puzzle, in order to properly do it and check it, you had to go down an entire floor, which was not a short process, and then go up an entire floor and had to verify to make sure you actually hit the right things in the right order. I don't know. It feels like most of the rest of this section of the game. Just weirdly padded. However, there were still some cool and interesting uh, puzzle designs, and I do like that boss fight.
Way to go. You did it, Lure. Now we can go that away. Honestly, I'm thinking I agree with you, Torchana. The music in this game is just a bob. Come on, let's go back to the Tower of Spirits. Well, okay, I guess. Right after I get my heart container. Up, up, up. Pirates, or pirates, rather. Which one, Javan? The fact that you have to control the entire game, 100% of it, with the stylus. Now, there are a couple of shortcuts, for example. Uh, I can't even show you right now. But I can hit, uh, I believe, R or L, like, physically on the thing. And pull down the item I have equipped. And that's it! So there's two buttons in the whole game. Honestly, if this game had better control scheme, I'd replay this semi-frequently. Really. This would be one of my replays, all this. As is, I'll probably never play it again. I'm gonna laugh if the announcement in the next Nintendo Direct is We're releasing Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks on the Switch today! And I'm just gonna be like, You know they like to do that. They like to shadow drop a lot. Or not? No, sorry, that's not shadow dropping. That's uh, I forget what that's called. It's called. It's it's immediately dropping. You know, hey, it's coming out in a week. That kind of thing. Oh god, that would be awful. Wise philosopher. No, so. The two DS handhelds came out on the DS, obviously, and for a brief period of time, they were on the Wii U's eShop. Now, obviously, the eShop is gone, so as of right now, the only place you can actually procure a new copy of that is on the... Uh, or not a new copy, a copy, excuse me, one moment, is on the DS. I'll be right back.
John, the spirit tracks between the ocean temple and here have reappeared. Yes, nicely done. Now there's but one temple left until all the tracks are restored. Once they are, we can enter the altar of the demon king. <laughs> yes, the next temple is hidden in the mountain of fire. Actually, no, chill pangolin. So, I guess I'm not fascist after all. to release it on PC, Javan. Because that would solve a lot of issues here. Alright, so, it's on PC. It's a mouse and keyboard driven game. Um, oh, on the deck. Oh. Never mind. I take that back. So, first and foremost, um, it's on the Switch 2. Uh, which is just the Steam Deck at that point. I do like that in Noble Dan. Absolutely. Retaining the these controls, I'm fine with. I don't want to get rid of them. The big port important thing for me is fixing the possibility for a another control scheme to exist. That's a little bit trickier, because this is so tied into how this game functions, even at a fundamental level. Like, all of these items, these don't operate normally. They operate on where you tap and how you interact with the world. I think the only way we could really make that work without is to actually add a form of a lock-on system. And I'm, I'm hesitant to do that. But I don't... I can't think of any other real way to accomplish that. You lock onto something and that's how you're able to home in or, or place things in there. But that doesn't solve, for example, the boomerang. They're probably thinking, what's the problem with the boomerang? Let me explain how you use the boomerang in this game. Yep, yep, yep. Go us. This is how you draw the boomerang. And you control the path of the boomerang rather directly. So... How the hell do you do that with a controller? I mean, I, you, you could have it be like, you know, the right analog. Which sounds terrible, honestly, but, you know, I'm not sure I have another idea at all. Sorry, I'm just reading all the side quests we could do right now. And just to be clear why we're not doing these. So, for example, we could do a race sequence. We have to race across a thing with the whip. We manage it in under... Uh, sorry, in between a minute 15 and a minute 30, we get a new bomb bag. Cool. If we get under minute 15, we get the heart stick. Or the heart stick. Heart piece. We can also go carry someone from one place to another, so that's cool. Uh, we can also fight 14 rooms of enemies in a row, including every boss to date, to get us a bigger bomb bag. We could carry someone to the bomb bag. Like, you get my point. Like, these aren't really worth doing unless we're going and trying to get everything, which obviously we're not. So, I'm just showing my work here. been thinking about that over the last couple of days as I've been playing Phantom and this, and I think while we're out 
my overall answer might be something along the lines of, no, I give up. The games are unremakeable. You son of a Submariner. And these are the teleporters. Oh, that's... And he teleported in front of me. Which is terrible. Thanks for taking control away from me for that game. By the way, I appreciate that. No, attack! Uh, 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 hi. Killed one, though, I think. But really, mouse and keyboard is the easy answer here. Just what I'm doing right now. This really is a substantially better playing game now that I'm playing it emulated. And if these come out on mobile, well then I suppose I can only say that that sucks. But I suppose... Nothing good we can say about that. It is better than Hourglass. I mean, it's already scoring better, despite the mic issues. Are they respawning? They're straight up respawning! So in the previous game, you could kill all those guys and, and clear the room, so to speak. I know what you're thinking. No, you didn't kill... No, I killed the one in the lower left. But if you see, the one in the lower left is still there. the mandate, you know. I can just feel the people making this game. Alright, make a game controlled entirely by the stylus. This is probably as good as such a game could look. I'm not sure it's possible to outdo this. Seriously. Listens, part. I didn't put it on the DS. What do you want from me? I'm not going to disagree with you, Javin, but I don't think there's a game I would ever enjoy playing with touch controls. Personally, I mean. I just don't like touch controls. I never have, I never will. I like feedback. I like tactile. What did I have when I was nine? I think I had just gotten my first SNES when I was nine. It was either that or the NES, one of the two. I've tried Civilization with touch controls. That does not work out well for me. Mario Kart with touch. Ah! How many of you have actually played that nonsense? Of course I didn't write it down. Yeah, 
Yeah, I would rather play Mario Kart Wii with the Wii wheel than play that crap. No offense, nobody liked it. Sorry, I shouldn't say crap. So that utter flaming garbage! I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Perfectly valid and acceptable game. Uh, how did that miss? Uh, what's Wave Race on, Ross? Aren't we all glad that we got Mario Kart Tour instead of an actual Mario Kart game? I mean, don't mistake me. The latest Mario Kart is the greatest Mario Kart game ever made. And that's awesome. But good god. Go, my minion. Suffer me now! And now she's pink. Hey, check it out. I'm a warp phantom now. Hee hee. You know those eyeball things? They're called phantom eyes. If you draw a line to a phantom eye, I can teleport straight there. It sounds so nice. I'll never have to walk anywhere again. I don't know about anywhere. Yeah, I figured. Most people do, Russ. I did, but I'm not gonna do it, Spartan. <laughs> when, when would I have time for that? I know a few people who are in it. Yeah, let's see. Zelda's I like. So, I like Wind Waker Zelda. I like um, Breath Zelda. And I like... Um, uh, and I like Spirit Track Zelda, you know, the one we're playing right now. There we go. But there is one other Zelda I actually rather like, and I know I'm going to get some hackles for this, but I stand by it. I like Twilight Zelda. Don't mistake me, Midna blows her out of the water. But... Twilight Zelda gets a lot of usage out of the very few scenes she has. She has so few scenes, and yet she there's a great density to every single one of them. I'll, I'll be talking about this. I don't want to preface too much of this, and there's obviously some spoilers, but I'll point these kind of things out when we get to Twilight Princess. I mean, even the way that she at the very beginning of the game, she surrenders her kingdom to the villain. And yeah, <laughs> like just the way that's animated and showcased really gets across some character for her. And the way she's holding herself, there's this sort of weight as she's just kind of slumping in almost all of her scenes, except for her last two. All right, so obviously we need to go over there. Did you just automatically defend me, Zelda? Holy crap. Yeah, she she's also actually regal. But yeah, no, Min Minda is obviously better. I'm again, I'm not trying to argue that. I just happen to like Twilight Zelda. A key. Um, look, 
All I'm saying is if we had more Zelda piloting giant mechas back in Breath of the Wild, maybe I would have liked Breath of the Wild's story a bit better. I'm just saying. No, seriously, think about that for half a second. All right, we need to invade the thing. All right, we've taken the thing. And then Zelda's like, and I'll form the head. <laughs> and she just, she's just backing us up as we're fighting the boss or whatever. Just this giant mech battle. And just, just stomping everything. Uh, welcome back, Shimmy Gaming. Yeah, Midna might actually be the best character in, in the franchise, so that is a bit unfair. Oh god, no, that's even better. So, like, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, obviously, she joins in. Just hear me out for a second. Restructure the game a little bit. You you party up with one of the local champion's descendants in order to infiltrate the dungeon. You do the first bit of the dungeon, and then you fight, like, the first phase of the boss. Then you pop out. Zelda shows up, starts piloting the craft, and then starts backing you up in this, like, awesome hyperbeam moment when you're, like, kind of controlling the mech and kind of controlling Link as you absolutely obliterate... The blight, right? Hang on, I'm not done yet. So you do this four times. When you get to the end, you can already see where I'm going with this. Because then it's like, alright, we fight Ganondorf, and he's like, ah, oh, I will become Ganon, this ultimate giant thing, and I and, and, he, and then Zelda comes out. Kakong! 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 And she devastators the whole situation. And then, you know, awesome ensues. Okay, so I can teleport, but I can't teleport to anywhere significant. Oh yeah, and then there's a post game where you can go wrap up all the 100%ing stuff you want to, and you just get to keep that. You know, everyone in chat is just biting the lips because this is just the plot of Tears of the Kingdom for all I know. Too hot to chase intruders. Yeah, tell me about it. You know what? I'm not sure where to go next. I think I went the wrong way, because there's nothing up here I can interact with. Nothing new. I need a key to go down there first. So let's go back up. So she... I can't teleport over there. It has to be down, because there's nowhere to go here. Alright. There's one thing I haven't poked at yet. Zelda. I know you're in a giant mech, but keep up. Oh. Thank you, Zelda. Those are just hearts. All right, next idea. Yeah, yeah, no, that's just our life now. 
just got boxed in there. Cool. I'm not sure this is the correct idea. I was just trying something out. You know, that's a very valid point. I guess I could kill this phantom. the screen scroll worked a little bit better. Like that thing I pretty much just had to do. It can get a little irritating. Whoops. Like having to do this to just cross the room. At least the music's better. <laughs> oh god, the music. Damn it, that's not what I wanted. Okay. Um... Go north. Nope, no, not that far north. Crap. Zelda, Zelda. I was just following your directions. No, you weren't. Come here. You know what? Who are they going to report me to now? They're all dead. It's a very DS looking dungeon. For good and for bad. I'm actually stuck. Holy crap. All right, hang on. Not sure where to go to progress. This is weird. Okay. First time I've gotten stuck this particular playthrough. Uh, let's see. Climb it back. Get the small key. Locked door. Do I have a small key right now? I do not have a small key right now. I mean, in my defense, Diane Keto, the N64 looked like crap even then. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I can teleport. Okay, uh, nope. Okay, cool. I'm missing a key. It's always a key, isn't it? I'm missing a key. Oh god, I think I know where it is. I think I know where it is. Oh my god. Yeah, no, that's that's probably where it is. 
This is gonna piss me off if this is true. should be a treasure chest right here with a key. Concept of trade. It's a random loot thing that gives you rupees. Yeah, that one right there, see? Already got it. Uh, okay. So let me explain what's going on here. Uh, I need to open this door right here. No, don't. I need to open this door here. That way I can have Link right there. Well, Zelda's right here, and then we can hit the two switches at the same time. That's what we need to do to progress. I know the goal. I'm missing a key. I need a key to get through that door. Now, we're going to go ahead and try Jobin's thing, because I know what Jobin's referencing. I'm pretty sure it's just random treasure, but I could be extremely wrong. And it's worth at least bothering. This is several times I have been stuck this shift. Stock, but like make it too damn long. Well. That is way up there. Oh, come on. Do I seriously? So there's a concept I can never remember the official term for it. So I'm just going to start making up my own terms because I do that for everything else, anyways. It's called time to solve. Now, that's an extremely inaccurate term, but we're sticking with it. Because that's what it is. Here's how this works out. You look at a puzzle, you stare at it for a minute. Aha! I figured it out. Then you have to execute the solution for that puzzle. The amount of time it takes you between figuring it out and executing the solution. That's the time to solve, right there. Um, and again, that's why it's inaccurate, because it's actually time to execute. But time to execute sounds weird. Aha! Uh -huh. Anybody will tell you, you want your uh, time to solve to be relatively low. And it's not a key! And one of the problems I have uh, with the stuff we've been doing for the last uh, several hours at this point is the time to solve, or whatever it's called, has been weirdly high. Now I have nothing to solve. I have no idea where this... Like, I know where the chest is supposed to be. It's right there. I've got a screenshot showing it. This is floor 13. Okay. I'm just going to read this word for word, and we're going to see where we missed it. Yeah, that's it, Loke. Because, like I said, time to solve is inaccurate, because time to solve is until you figure out the solution. Time to execute is the actual thing I'm talking about, and time to execute should be relatively low in any game. Zelda games in particular, considering how puzzle-heavy they tend to be. Like, once you have figured out what you're doing, the, the answer should be, ah, do 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 bam Maybe not quite literally that fast, but you get the concept.
Execution downtime. Hmm. Oh God, where were the fish at? I don't even remember where they were. Execution lull. You're right, I did straight up forget they were there. It's hard to solve a puzzle if you are literally missing a piece of it. Okay, so now... Zelda, what are you doing? I need you to do this. Blaming the game, I just like I guess I forgot that was even a thing. That's on me. Don't have to call me out like that, Javin. It's okay. Okay, moving on. I'd like to at least beat this dungeon before the the dinner that thing happens. Help, Zelda, in your giant mecha suit. Ah, Zelda, help! Javin, you know game development. What is the term? The official term for that? That's going to bother me now. The time to execute. Okay. I'll be honest. I was not expecting that. Most concerned about the remaining games? There's two that I am somewhat concerned about. Skyward Sword, because I... <laughs> because I'm just... There's too much I don't really know about Skyward Sword. Because, again, vague memories and pain. And Tears of the Kingdom. Because I've literally never played it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm certainly having some self-doubt about Four Swords. Like I said, I, I have made the terrible mistake of talking it up. But, no, Four Swords, Four Swords is just going Of course it is. Right? Right? Oh my god, we're not done yet. 
I'm never I'm just stuck in this dungeon forever. This is just my life now. Ocarina is like negative 500. Majora's like negative 600. Twilight Princess is negative 1000. Wind Waker, I've, I've said this before, Wind Waker will score well. It will. But I do think it will score less than people assume it will. It's just something that's likely. Yeah, Twilight might be one of our new top ten, top five contenders. It had its issues, but the Wii U version skipped, uh, fixed quite a few of those. Okay, so she's actually stuck here, so let's get out of there. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know the one part of the Breath of the Wild that I am unabashedly positive about, Javin? You can probably guess what it is, because it's the extremely obvious pick. Well, tutorialization, yeah, but the plateau, right? The plateau you start on is extremely well designed. Like, even really really tiny basic details are just amazing in the plateau. Like, there's a reason I used that first shot. Um, that first shot when you can look down the the, slow, the the road. Pathway? We'll go with pathway. You look down the pathway and see, like, there's the guy you can interact with, there's the temple in the background, there's this stuff you can interact with. There's this cliff you can go over the edge of. There's several items right in front of you. Like, just, they designed that initial shot perfectly. People spent time and effort on that, and I appreciate that tremendously. Can I not fight you? Cool. Good talk. Yeah, I can only think of one other game off the top of my head that really tutorializes to the extent of the plateau. Mario World. And yes, I know I've used that as the golden standard of game tutorialization for years, and I stand by it. Permanent, or I'd have to hold it. Nope, that's that's permanent. Okay, cool. Deku Tree is also very, very good. I mean, a lot of core Nintendo stuff. Whoops, hang on. A lot of core Nintendo stuff, EAD, if you prefer, tends to be very well tutorialized. Go figure. I mean, Mario won is an example I've used. Here's what a video game is. And to use something that's not Nintendo, E1M1. Doom. I look forward to talking about that level sometime, because honestly, well, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to Doom. That level by itself might be a lot of that conversation. Wait, what? God damn it. Okay, fine. No, no, no. Go, come here. Right. Yeah, actually, the first stage of Mega Man X1. Another extremely good example of tutorialization. I mean, I could be wrong about this, but didn't they design E1M1, like, dead last when they were making Doom? 
when they knew what they were doing, and they had they were firing on all pistons, and they had all the knowledge of the engine and the systems and everything, and it's like, alright, now let's make the tutorial level. I could be wrong, but I know several designers who will do exactly that with their games. They'll design the intro dead last. I don't remember Green Hill Zone well enough to comment on it by memory, unfortunately. I've never done a full analysis of it. I believe you, though. Also, while it's not maybe quite on the same level, uh, World 1, Stage 1 of Mario 3 is very high up there as well. Zelda, are you stuck on the terrain? Oh my god, I'm here. This woman, I swear. She'll be the death of me. Literally, I suppose, since I've died several times. I did, late of all. I have quite literally done essays on Mario World's uh, first stage. And also the entire game. First screen of Metroid 1 was pretty solid, too. What's really sad, in a weird kind of way, is for all the many, many, many negatives that uh, Met uh, excuse me, Kid Icarus will get when we get there, the first stage is probably not one of them. They do a bunch of decent stuff to get across the idea of what you're getting into and how you're doing it um, in, uh, in the very beginning of Kid Icarus. Uh, and then there's the rest of the game. But anyways, um, bob -omb Battlefield, oh man. See, it's funny you say that, because bob -omb Battlefield and... I don't remember the name of it, but the first stage in Sunshine, both are excellent for basically the same reasons. Uh... Both do a good job of it, though. Very much so. Now, Odyssey... Odyssey is an interesting approach to a tutorial stage. The, the hat stage... Because the hat stage is actually the first tutorial. The second tutorial is the second stage immediately after it. And, well, okay, I'm still lying to you. I'm sorry, I shouldn't lie to you. Because the problem is, Mario Odyssey never stops tutorializing. They are constantly introducing new mechanics and new concepts, and they're showcasing them as they go. It's very Mario World, in that sense. But let's talk about the hat stage for just a second, because that's what I wanted to mention. Um, the hat stage, it's a playground. It's just a big open field filled with stuff you can do. Most of it's optional, but it's just a big open playground with a bunch of stuff you can do. I mean, honestly, enough said. And they do a lot with that to get the player into the type of game it is. And what kind of things you can do with it. Yeah, Mario 64 Courtyard. Another good example of that. bob on Battlefield was good, but Mario 64 Courtyard was even better. Okay, I would not have figured this out. I, I'm going to be honest. Okay, that's awful that that didn't work at all. Well, yep, this is my life. I just nothing I can do about that. Take 
to. How though? Hang on. I apologize. I have to read like three paragraphs to figure out how to get to the step it wants me to be at here. It is also like inches from dinner time. In fact, I believe it is currently dinner time. So, I have spent so long on this crap. kind of tea you got, if you don't mind sharing. There it is. So, about that no pixel hunting. Oh my god. So that was what I was missing, was that switch. That I couldn't see from any angle until I just started boomeranging the air for no reason other than knowing that it was there. That's not great. I hope the score doesn't start going down. I've been enjoying this playthrough for what it's worth. No, I did earlier, Javin. She, it was the first thing I did, actually, was I sent her over here to be like, Hey, what's over here? And there were there was the sand pit, which prevented her from progressing, and then the other sand pit, and I was like, well, there's, there's nothing here, then. If they had put it a little bit more in sight, I would have seen it. That, that's pretty much the problem. I couldn't see the damn thing. It was just out of the camera range for both her and him. The only way I saw it was by actively uh, just tossing the boomerang out, because the boomerang drags the camera. So about that time to execute. Now that we know what we're doing, we have to do this nice, slow arduous slog through this section twice. You see what I mean, by the way? We couldn't hear. I'll, I'll demonstrate, in case you didn't believe me. The first time we could see the switch is right there, in the middle of the sand pit, which instantly kills us. Our actual view is right here. Sorry, just, just make up a point. Actually, yeah, Javin. I was thinking the same thing earlier. I, I literally had the exact same thought. I wish they just let me hand the camera for a bit. Just roam the camera around like as a as a feature, you know. Save me, Zelda. 
for myself, apparently. Accomplished all that. I don't actually know what my goal was from all that. Um, oh. Hang on. I bet you that's what it is. All right. Um. All right. All right. All right. Come on. This part I figured out earlier. I just couldn't figure out what to do with it exactly. No, 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 no. Uh. No, oh God. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Actually, you can't. It runs out at a certain point, Brisa. I think it's because the game can only track so much um, movement on the cursor. It can only save so much movement on the cursor. So there's a finite amount it'll track. Okay. Yeah, as Frieza points out, this isn't a great control mechanism. Even if it works perfectly, which, as we already have demonstrated, it does not. Okay, we're done, right? No, there's another floor. I'm gonna write a special negative for floor 15, though. That was not great. So, Twitch is weird, and prioritizes the, uh, I forget what the actual technical term is, but it prioritizes sending the stream to mobile apps faster than to computers. So, mobile is pretty much always going to be faster than, um, like, like, more up-to-date than PC. I'm just going to plot a walkthrough. I'm kind of sick of this place. I kind of want to be on with it. We got here. Nope, oh, yep, nope, oh, there's dinner time. Well, at least I get something adorable. That's cool. If only there was something adorable here. If only. My adorable. There is no escape. No, he took your stairs. Well, yeah. And now you are my stairs. <laughs> no, you are my. I'm your stairs. Wait, you are? Mm -hmm. That's pretty strange. I don't want to step all over you, though. I don't want to hurt you. I was just pretending. Oh, okay, okay. Then I'll pretend step. Step, 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 step. Oh, no, she's squeezing me back. Ugh. You, you fell. <laughs> okay, up, 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 up. Yeah. Ugh, there you go. Hi. Squeeze! Matt? Matt? Jordan's hugging you. Jordan's hugging you. I'm hugging you. Hug. So Jordan. Um, um, um. Oh. All right. Can go. Is it dinner time? Uh -huh. I think Jordan said yes. Okay, I don't know who that is, but come here. Can you do me a big favor? Yeah. Can you say bye stream? Here, I'll show you. Bye stream. Hang on, see. There we are. Do you see us in the corner? 
Mm-hmm. Say hi, stream. Hi, hi, stream. <laughs> now say bye, stream. <laughs> say bye, tickles. 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 <laughs> please. Okay, I'm frozen. <laughs> Breaking free. Ah. <laughs> More of this tomorrow.